Good evening. Welcome to our Sunday evening, March the 29th service. And uh, we're just uh, thankful and excited uh, that we can meet together here this evening online. We know uh, that when all this began and uh, instructions began to be given, that we were to practice social distancing, social distancing. Now we see that this is referred to as physical distancing uh, because it's possible to still remain in contact, to be connected through all the many social media tools that are available to us. And I'm thankful for that. I'm glad that there are some good positive ways uh, that we can use social media and online resources uh, during very difficult times. We want to take care that this time, though, is not a time of spiritual distancing, uh, but instead it's an opportunity to draw near to Jesus Christ personally and His families. Uh, all throughout the Bible, we see God's invitation to His people uh, and His desire to be close to us and to be near to us, especially when we're going through uh, trials. Uh, Psalm 73, here's some scripture just to jot down and uh, use it as an encouragement. Study it, read it in your devotion time. Psalm 73, verse 28, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all His works. Uh, Psalm 73, 28. Hebrews 10, uh, beginning in verse 22, says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Now, verse 25, the first portion of it is something that we can't physically do right now, uh, but we can still encourage one another and provoke others to good works and faith. Verse 25 said, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Boy, as I read that now, uh, having been forced uh, not to be able to meet together on campus here for a while, what a privilege it is uh, that when we will be able to meet together, that we'll, we'll have that opportunity. And may the Lord help us in the future not to take that lightly, but, but to be here just as often as we can. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That's in Hebrews 10, beginning in verse 22. Uh, James chapter 4, beginning in the 6th verse, it says, But he giveth more grace... Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You know, today's a time to draw uh, near again to Jesus Christ. It's a time to approach Him boldly. Uh, with our cares and with our burdens. It's a time to, to dwell and abide in His Word and in prayer. It's time to cleanse our hearts. It's time to experience a personal and family revival so that when we all do meet together, uh, our lives will have been grown and strengthened. Your family. And then when we all come together, our church uh, will have been strengthened and we will have grown through this time uh, here that we've had to go through in a spiritual way. Well, I'm excited about meeting together. I, I believe that you are as well. Uh, we, will, we will have to have a great day. We'll have to have a big day uh, when our first uh, on-campus service together uh, again occurs. We'll, we'll look forward to that and make that a great day. What a, what a great time of year it is today for God's people to be together uh, as we get closer to the day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, on Wednesday, we shared in our service a song. My parents uh, came by and, and, sh and prepared for us, and it was a real blessing. And I want to share another one this evening with you. Uh, it, it reminds us that we have a living Savior. Uh, so let's listen together before uh, we look into God's Word. Without blame 
Amen. Amen. Well, I'm thankful for that good song and uh, just encouraging to know that our Savior uh, is a living Savior and that we can draw near to Him uh, today. Well, I want to encourage you to take your Bibles and get them open there uh, wherever you may be. Uh, in your in your uh, favorite chair or at the table together, and I've seen pictures of uh, how some of our families are smart enough to put this on their television screen, and their families gather together. The boys and girls are in the floor watching together as families. And uh, I want you parents and families to know that if you're going that extra mile and making this a part of Sunday morning, Sunday nights, and Wednesday nights, I know that God's going to bless it, and He's going to use it in the lives of your children. And Today, tonight's message I want to share with you is about uh, the importance of faith in parents' lives. I want to speak to you tonight about the faith that parents must have. The faith that parents must have. And we can apply that to grandparents. We can apply it to anyone who has the opportunity to have a positive influence in the lives of children, especially during this time we live in. So take your Bibles and open to the uh, New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 11. I'm going to read a single verse of Scripture there. It's the 23rd verse, Hebrews 11, and uh, verse number 23. Let's look at it together, and then we'll take a moment to ask the Lord just to bless His Word. Hebrews 11, verse number 23. The Bible says, By faith Moses, when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. They were not afraid of the king's commandment. Well, let's think about this scripture tonight and let's just ask the Lord to bless His word this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your goodness and grace. We do thank You for the word of God. We thank You for the song that we heard that encouraged us tonight. And uh, Lord, it is an exciting time where getting very close to the time when we will celebrate Your resurrection. Lord, help us not to forget Your present help in our lives in times of trouble, and that, Lord, we can look to You and we can have faith in You. Speak to our families tonight about faith. Encourage them to trust You. Uh, Lord, we pray tonight that, God, You'll speak to someone who may be watching this service now or will in the future, uh, Lord, that, uh, that, uh, that does not know You as their Savior. May they, uh, Lord, look, uh, to the Scriptures. May they uh, listen to the teaching and preaching of Your Word. And Lord, may they realize there's something uh, missing, something important. Uh, the most important part of their lives is missing. And that's having a real relationship with You. Your Word is able to do these things. And God, we look forward to the future when this is all behind us of hearing all the great and mighty things You did uh, through these difficult times. So bless Your Word today. Uh, as it goes forth, empower it, strengthen it to our families. May we receive it by faith and may we, Lord, respond to it by faith. And so we'll thank You for what You're going to do. And we ask it in Jesus' name and Amen. Well, we know this evening that God's Word uh, reminds us in Hebrews chapter 11 in verse number 6 that without faith it is impossible to please Him. Speaking about God. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. We must believe that God is. And that God is a person. He's, he's someone that within His heart is a desire to reward those that seek Him. And God's people are to live lives of faith. Uh, Hebrews 11 reminds us that real faith is not just for the good times. Real faith is not just for the easy days of our lives. Uh, we know that true faith True faith, real faith, speaks the loudest and shines the brightest when times are hard, when it's difficult. We live lives of faith by looking to Jesus Christ. Our faith is in Him. Jesus Christ is our Savior. Ephesians chapter 2 and the 8th and ninth verse says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that, that faith to be saved, it's, it's a gift of God. It's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, we're born again. Uh, a person is saved from their sin debt when we have faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, His death, His burial, His resurrection. Jesus Christ came into this world. He was God's gift for all men. And Christ came into the world to pay man's sin debt. The wages of sin is death. That means that sin separates us from God. When you're born into the world, you're born a sinner. We were all born sinners. And 
our sin had already separated us from God. We looked this morning at John 3.18 that says if we, if we have not yet believed, if we do not believe in Jesus Christ, we are already condemned. Our sin has already condemned us because we have not believed in Him. When you're born again, uh, we know that, uh, that each day, uh, that uh, from that day forward, we have His presence in our life. If you are here and listening or watching tonight, uh, this service, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, each day you live without Jesus Christ, you live without God. If you live your whole life without receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, you're going to live your whole life without God. And then when your life in this world is over, you're going to enter an eternity without God. You're going to spend an eternity paying for your sin debt. And eternity will not be long enough to pay it. But God loves you. He sent His Son to deal with your sin debt. And Jesus Christ died on the cross, sinless, guiltless. He paid there for you your sin debt. He's dealt with it. It is a debt that's been paid in full. And today you can by faith believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. When you by faith ask God to forgive your sin, when you believe that Jesus Christ will give you eternal life, God will forgive you and you will be given the gift of eternal life. God is satisfied when anyone puts their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of their sin and when they trust Him as their Savior. After we've been born again by faith, by faith we, we as God's people are to live our lives by faith, knowing, knowing that the same One who saved us from sin's penalty someday will take us to be with Him and deliver us from sin's presence, will and can protect and provide for us each day, day by day, as we live our lives in this world. Now, as we read through Hebrews 11, we find some of the greatest names in all the Bible mentioned here. You read about Abraham and Isaac. You read about Moses and Joseph. But in our text, I want you to see that it's not only the great men of God that please God by their faith in Him, but that God sees and notes the lives of faithful parents. In Exodus chapter 6, the 20th verse tells us that there was a man whose name was Amram who had a wife whose name was Jochebed and they were parents. They had a daughter whose name was Miriam and then they had uh, some sons and at least one of those sons were younger than Miriam. Uh, we know that they had, uh, had a son whose name was Aaron and then they had a son whose name was Moses. And I want you to understand this evening that before Moses became the man of faith that he became, before he was used of God for the wonderful things that God did with his life, Moses had faithful parents. Faithful parents. You know, your children are living through an experience right now that you had never lived through before. God will use it to grow them. He will use it in their lives to establish their lives for whatever they may have to face in the future. God will use faithful parents to guide them. God will use faithful grandparents to help them have faith built into their lives and become a foundation for their lives. Angie and I wanted what God had in His heart for our daughter. And we want what God wants for our granddaughter's lives in the future. We want them to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and to live lives of faith in Him as they face their futures. You know, one of the saddest uh, statements in the Bible is found in Deuteronomy chapter 32 in the 20th verse. The Bible speaks there of children in whom is no faith. Moses, Moses saw the faith of his mother and father. And their faith in God and God's Word helped him to become the man that he became. Their faith helped prepare him for the future that he faced. We remember the story of Moses in the Bible, how by faith Moses' parents kept Moses alive even though Pharaoh had ordered the death of all the new Hebrew children, all the male children that were born. They chose to trust in God. They chose to trust God's power to keep their son safe. When Moses was some 80 years old, he had to stand before Pharaoh and he had to deliver to Pharaoh God's message to let the Hebrews go, to set them free. And Moses did it with the same faith that he had seen in his mother and his father. No one 
has more influence in the life of a child than a father or a mother who believe in God and live by faith in the Word of God. The faith that I saw in my parents and have seen, the faith that I saw in my grandparents' lives, it still speaks to me today, day by day. It encourages me to be who I am and to do what I do with my life. I want to encourage parents this evening to, uh, to speak to grandparents, to anyone and everyone uh, who has and can influence the lives of children, especially right now, to have faith in God. Have a real relationship of faith with Jesus Christ that can be seen right now uh, to be sure that uh, in your heart and home that the children there uh, can see your faith. A faith that will shape and strengthen their lives. A faith that will help uh, make them become uh, the people they will grow into becoming and that will enable them to live the lives that they will have to live and face the futures that they will have to face. Have faith in God. We must have faith. I hope you'll just write these simple truths down this evening and begin with number one. As we look at this passage of Scripture, we see believing parents. Believing parents. Moses' parents chose to live by faith in God. They chose to live by faith in the Word of God in the midst of a nation of unbelievers. Now, the people of God were in Egypt. But I want you to understand that just because the Hebrew people in Egypt were the descendants of Jacob and Israel, just because they were Israelites, did not mean that all the people had faith in God or believed God. It was a personal choice that Moses' parents made for themselves, for their family and children. The Bible speaks about this in Joshua 24, a time when a choice had to be made by each heart and home, a personal choice. The Bible says in Joshua 24, beginning in the 14th verse, Now, therefore, fear ye the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, He it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. Now, I know today that you and your family live in a time when you're surrounded by those who may profess to know God. You may, may know people who, who profess to be Christians. But the life choices and preferences do not make, make this or prove this to be a reality. But you must choose. You must choose in your own heart. You parents must choose in your own homes to have faith in God and His Word. Faith is obedience. Faith is proven by obedience. It's demonstrated by obedience. If we believe something is real, if we believe it's true, then it affects our lives. It affects how we live. It affects what we do. Believe in the true and living God. Be parents who believe in God. Believe in His Word. Choose to believe that the will of God is the best for you and your family. Choose to live His way. Choose to be parents and families of faith so that it makes you and your family who you are. That it leads you as it leads you to live your lives as you live your lives. Be believing parents, uh, especially in this time in which we live. But write down the second thing. When we look at Moses, we see not only did he have believing parents that made a personal choice to be people of faith, faith in God's Word and will, But we also see brave parents. You know, parenting is not easy. And it cannot be done well if we're afraid to do what's right for our families and children. It takes courage to choose to live lives of faith. Courage to state that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior. It takes courage to say that you're going to live a life of faith in His Word. That you're going to choose to make the Word of God your guide. The foundation of your heart and home. The world will ridicule you 
It will try to convince you that you truly do not love your children and families if you choose to live a life of faith to God and His Word. You'll have people in your own families who, who, will, uh, who will tell you that you're, that you're not doing your family right, that you're, that you're not making right choices. The devil will try to deceive you. He'll want to convince you that you shouldn't take this faith thing too far. But remember what our text said tonight. Hebrews 11 verse 23, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid. They were not afraid of the king's commandment. The Bible said that Moses' parents were not people of fear, but people of faith. They they were not even afraid of the decree that the king himself had made. They saved Moses. They hid him away. But not because they were afraid. They did it because they had faith in God. They were brave and faithful. And brave and faithful parents will do what they do. They, They will choose to live as they live, to train and raise their children as they do. Not because they're afraid of anything or anyone, but because they have faith in God and His Word. And they believe that the will and Word of God, the way of God, is the best way. When troubling times come, when challenges rise up, in good times and in bad times, times when you have a lot, times when you may struggle to make the ends meet together, when disappointments come, when there is discouragement, be brave and be faithful. Trust in God. Choose to teach your children and your families to trust in Him and draw close to Him. Let them see that God will get you through so that they will learn to have faith in Him in the future. But just write down one last thing tonight. When we look at Moses, we see that Moses had faithful parents. Parents who believed God. Parents who were brave enough to choose faith in God and His Word to trust in God's will is the best way for their family and children. And Moses had parents who obeyed. Parents who obeyed. Moses had parents who obeyed God's Word. The first verse of Hebrews 11 gives us a description of faith. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is not doing what we do or making the choices that we make based on what we can see. That isn't faith. Faith is making choices we make and doing what we do because of what we believe, not what we might be able to see. It is because of who we believe God is. It is because of what we believe is true, that we believe the Word of God is true. This is why we do what we do by faith. This is why we choose the choices and decisions we make by faith. When Amram and Jochebed chose faith, not fear, to keep their baby Moses alive, they didn't know what was going to happen in the future. They believed that God had given them this child. They they believed it was a good child and that God had a plan for that child. They knew that they must be faithful now so that Moses could realize all that God in his heart and his life for him in the future. By faith, they made a little basket. We know they could not have known that when they placed that little basket in the river with their baby Moses inside, they couldn't have known that it was going to find its way to the very feet of Pharaoh's daughter. They could not have known that God had guided it there by His own hand. They, they couldn't have known or foreseen that God had already been at work in the heart of Pharaoh's daughter. And that He had placed within her heart a compassion and a love for that baby that she would find there that day in the basket that had been set forth by faith. Uh, they couldn't have known that God had, had, had led that young woman to have a compassion and a love for that child that would cause her to take that baby from the river, take it into Pharaoh's own palace and treat that child as her very own. Jochebed didn't know that Pharaoh's daughter would send for her. She couldn't have known that, that she, Moses' own mother, would be brought to the palace and he would, she would come to nurse her own son and to, to be a part of his life. She, she wouldn't have known that she would be able to share with Moses her faith in God, that she would be able, and, his, and, and Moses' true father, uh, to be able to, to tell Moses 
uh, all that God had done in his life and in the life of their family. They, they, they did not know those things. They could have never imagined it all. But they obeyed God and they chose to live faithful lives. And this is all we can do. And this is what we should do. This is what we should do in times when things are good and plentiful and also when times are hard and difficult. We must choose to have faith, to live faith lives. I want to encourage you this evening in this difficult time to choose faith. Believe God's Word. Trust God's will. Know above all Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And then let your children and grandchildren see that you're not living afraid, but you're living by faith in God. And help lay a foundation of faith for them so that, so that they will be able to experience everything God has in His heart for them. They'll be able to face difficult times in the future. If the Lord Jesus doesn't return soon, what our children may have to face on planet earth will be beyond our imagination. But we have a faithful God who is able to get them through and use them in difficult times, times of trials, in a way that will glorify Him. And so, let's be faithful. Uh, You parents, be faithful. Choose faith. Grandparents, all of us that can help influence children and help lay a foundation for them for their future. If you're listening, watching this video, uh, we trust today that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you will look to Him. Put your faith and trust in Him. Salvation's a finished work. It's not something you have to do or could do. It's something that you simply receive. God wants you to have it. And He's done everything possible for you to receive it. Just have faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And please contact us if you have questions or need help in these matters. Well, we're going to pray together tonight as we conclude our service. We look forward to meeting you again Wednesday evening, five o'clock, uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesday evenings for our online service. Make plans on joining us. But let's finish today in prayer. Let's ask the Lord to help us to be people of faith. Lord, we ask Your blessings now on Your Word that God has been preached. We just, uh, Lord, know that You, uh, God, have promised that it is powerful and it's effective in our lives. Speak to everyone watching and listening. Speak to the need they have that's the greatest need in their life. And God, may they have faith in You and Your Word. May they believe who You are. And may they believe, God, You want to bless and reward them through their faithful obedience. And so, Lord, uh, minister to every family and meet needs in their lives. We pray for moms and dads, God, that they'll make a personal choice and choice together as a family to trust You, believe Your Word, to walk by faith, God, to want Your will for their lives and for their children. And Lord, we're just trusting today that if someone is listening and watching that's unsaved, they'll, they'll trust Christ as their personal Savior. And let us know, God, what they've done, what You've done for them. So then, Lord, that we might be able to encourage and help them and give them some instruction as they learn what it means to know You as their Savior. So thank You for the time together this evening. Lord, keep us safe and keep us well. And Lord, keep us uh, close to You, we pray. We ask it all in Jesus' name and Amen. Amen. Well, good evening and God bless you.